Well, here we go with the area of a circle, theorem 11.9, our old pi r squared that we remember from back in the day. So, um, well, we're going to make a demonstration to help us understand that. And the first thing we're going to do is review our little demonstration for the circumference of a circle. You see, we spun that or rolled that circle around the ground, and we can see very clearly the distance traveled in one complete revolution is the circumference. So now we're going to take that a step further. We've got this circle broken into these pieces like this that we're going to call sectors because that's what they're called. And then we're going to do this. I want to lay them all out like that and roll them out. Just roll them right out like that. So there you go. You've got half the sectors. And you can visualize, you've got this little icicle shape up here, and you can visualize that you've got the other half of those. We could fit those in pointed downward there. And we would, uh, we would be shading in this region over here. So let's go back and keep rolling here. And you could see this area that we would trace out. That's approximately the area that would be filled in by all those sectors being rearranged like little wedges facing each other. And that shape starting to look a little bit like a rectangle. Okay, it's, it probably looks a little too much like a rectangle, but after all, these are 30 degree sectors. What if we use 10 degrees? What if we use little slivers of one degree, a half a degree? You can see we could construct, theoretically construct a figure that looks just like this, a rectangle. So. This rectangle, you'll notice it does not have a, a, a length or a base equal to the circumference. It's half the length. It's circumference divided by 2. Circumference is 2 pi r. Therefore, this distance would be pi r. And then we also know that this is the height of the rectangle is equal to the radius of our rolling circle. Well, if that's true, then we could take the area of a rectangle. And we know the area of a rectangle is base times height. So let's take our base, which is pi r, and our height, which is radius. We have pi r times r, and therefore pi r squared. And there you have it. All right, let's visualize a sector by comparing and contrasting them with arcs. So we're going to model these for 60, 90, 135, and 270 degrees, respectively, and just to give us an idea. Now, on top, we'll have sectors, which will sweep out an area, and in the bottom will just be arcs. Let's go. So again, you see that the regions on the top, um, they're going to give us square units. It's actually covering a surface. Whereas down below, these are our arcs. We could straighten those out before, like we did before, and we just have linear measures. Um, for example, the top might be square inches, square feet, square miles. But these arcs, of course, are simply um, inches, feet, centimeters, and the like. So just like we did before, they are fractional parts. Just like we did with arcs down there. We took a fractional part of a circle times the circumference. And here we're going to take a fractional part of a circle times its area. Really easy. Let's do some examples. Well, let's get started with the area example here with exercise number four. Straightforward, but we're given diameter. Be, read carefully. We do our substitution. That's a radius of eight feet when we simplify that. This is going to be exact. When we say exact, it's in terms of pi. 64 pi, we're writing it this way, which means 64 times the irrational number pi, and the units are square feet. Then we pull out our calculator, and we do our decimal approximation. And in this one, um, depending on what place value, but we're, we are told to go to the hundreds, and there you go. We'll do another straightforward one, number six from the textbook, and we'll show the calculator work this time. Straightforward substitution, one and a half kilometers, and when we square 1.5, yeah, just like you got that one memorized, 15 squared is 225, so of course, 
um, 1.5 squared is 2.25 or 2 and a quarter. So it's 2 and a quarter times pi square kilometers. That is your exact answer. And as we recall, we need the calculator. Let's go find that calculator. And we'll dig up the decimal approximation. And again, if you couldn't do this in your head, that's 1.5 squared. Let's square the radius first and then multiply times pi. And we look at it there, and, and depending on how many place we can see to our place value, it looks like the good old Boeing 707 to the nearest hundredth. So let's see if we got that right. We're done. Okay, let's solve one backwards. Oh, we could use literal equations, but we're just going to go straight forward on this. Exercise number nine. The author tossed you a softball here, and you'll see why in a minute. We're going to take the equation for the area of a circle, and we're going to substitute. We know that the area is 676 pi square centimeters. And right away, I mean, just look at that. You can just divide both sides of the equation in the first line, dividing out the pi. So you don't have to deal with pi. Pi is gone. So um, r squared is 676 square centimeters. And we take the root of both sides, the principal root. Remember, when you take the square root of uh, square centimeters, you get linear centimeters. And 676, as I recall, is a perfect square. So that is going to give us a radius of 26. Um, but then we have to answer the question. And the question was diameter. So we'll just take that and let's double it. And then we're done. So let's do one straightforward exercise for calculating the area of a sector. This is number 14 from your exercises. And we know the area of a sector is some fractional part of the area of a circle. And this example with our 60 degree arc here, or 60 degree central angle, excuse me. Now the, the problem says sectors, so clearly we could calculate the area of this sector, or we could calculate the area of this sector, or both. But um, for our demonstration, let's we'll stick to this sector right here. And again, the central angle is equal to the intercepted arc. So when we do our substitution, it's going to be 60 out of the 360. The radius is given as 10. Very straightforward here. 10, so we have 100 pi for the circle, and we have 1 sixth of that. So we have 1 sixth of 100 pi. And when I rearrange that, if I want it in exact, then I, I suppose I've got 50 thirds pi. Yuck, that looks like something an Algebra 2 student would write. So let's, um, but for us people that want to actually buy something at Home Depot, we have to get this into a decimal. And see how we'll place value they well I didn't say. So let's just let's just do the math here. We'll take 50 thirds and do leave it in 50 thirds until you're ready to do the complete calculator conversion. We're going to divide by three. In other words, don't write 16.6 pi. That's terrible. And then I've, so that is 50 thirds, and then I'm going to multiply times pi, and there we go. So if, if we were going to the nearest tenth, it would be 52 and four tenths, or uh, 36 hundredths. Let's see where, what place did we put it at? Ah, 36 hundredths. There you go. Okay, let's do one of these sector problems, a little bit of a trickster. This one, let's look at this one. Well, we're going to do it two ways, the um, tedious way and then the more fun, smart way. Why even show the tedious way? Well, because you guys like formulas. There's a formula. Area of a sector is a measure of the arc out of 360 times pi r squared. And blah, 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 blah. If I substitute, that's the given area of the sector. That's that green giant there. And that's equal to 310 out of 360. Notice I've substituted. I got rid of pi r squared. Nobody's asking you for a radius. Nobody's asking you for pi. But we want to know what is the area of the circle. So we could do, again, simplifying here. I divide out the tens. And then I suppose I could multiply both sides of the equation by the reciprocal. You know, that's actually not that bad. And that works out all right. And we divide all that out. And I don't know what it comes out. You, you, you've got calculators. Um, but, okay, there it is. But we're going to look at it 
a different way. We're just going to do it much easier. All right, start over. Proportions. Look at this. The area of the green giant of the sector is to the area of the whole circle as 310 degrees is to 360. So one little substitution and you're there. Then you go and you pull up your handy dandy calculator and you just do the old cross product thing. Just say 56 and 87 hundredths times 36 ought. And then we're going to take that gigantic number and divide it by 310 and we should be done. To the nearest hundredth, 66 and four hundredths. And there you go, oops, there you go. All right, another exercise where we have the area of the sector. This time we're solving for the radius of M. So let's jump right to the very fun uh, proportion method. So I think this makes a lot of sense. You can uh, take it as, well, let's just go through this. We know the area of this green sector is to the area of the entire circle as 89 is to 360. Central angle is given here. And again, notice the degree signs are missing because ratios are unitless. Now when I do the substitution, I'm going to make two substitutions. 12 and 36 hundredths for the area of the sector, but also pi r squared for the area of the circle. So when I do my show my little cross product, let's well let's pull up the calculator for this. And you know it's okay if you want to write an intermediate step, but you want to keep all the numbers in the register of your calculator. I'll show you what I mean. 12 and 36 hundredths times 360. Okay, that's the product of the red. So now I've got to take that number and I know that the blue product is equal to that. Well, the blue product is 89 times pi times r squared. So let's just unbundle or undo it. Let's first divide, divide by that 89. Okay, so pi r squared, which is the area of the circle, is almost exactly 50. So let's divide by pi. Again, using our pi key, using the full complement of the register so we don't incur a rounding error. And now we've got r squared. And if we keep track of it this way, we know that we've got r squared. And again, you can use scrap paper if you need to, but I see a lot of you, you're, you're pretty good at this. We've got r squared equal to this value. Then we can take the root and we can see that we, well, to the nearest hundredth, three and 99 hundredths. So let's fill that in and we'll call it good. Three and 99 hundredths meter. Now, when you do that, you have to keep track of such things. You took a square root of square meters and the unit became linear. So if you're good with all that, I'm good with it too. So we'll see you on the next film.